It's a beautiful setting for the next to last round of the 2019 American Flat Track Championship. And a title hangs in the balance at the Indian Motorcycle Minnesota Mile presented by Law Tigers. Let's go racing. Flat Track Motorcycle Racing. Just to recall what it was like in the beginning, let us take a quick look back, back at the turn of the century. century. It takes stout lads like them to go for this kind of competition. It's trials like this that have made the two-wheel little giant the tough piece of mechanism it is today. Take a look at this motorcycle. Each of today's races draws large crowds from all over the country. It's a revolution. Testing and bettering, testing and perfecting. Right up, cowboy. The wave of the future. Got a good start anyway. Yeah, and we'll see how hot I was the whole time. Every chance I get to race now, I enjoy it. What will you do? How hard are you willing to go? Will you let fear win? Or will you rise? Big one for Jeremy. And find victory. Shayna Hester takes the win. It changes the way you look at racing. This is a serious moment for him. He could wrap up the championship with a solid finish, but you know in a mile, Jared Mees is going to be hard to beat. He's won every one this year trying to stave off elimination. But in the mile tracks, the Harleys have been very fast this year. So Sammy Halbert is seeking his first victory of the season in the singles class. Dalton Gauthier has been clutch as of late to restretch the points lead over Dan Bromley. These two are tied just a couple of races ago. Bromley has to win this one. In the AFT production twins class, Corey Texter started the year on fire, but as of late, other riders coming on strong could be a showdown in that class. Jason Wygan joined by master wheelman AJ Allmendinger. A great place to race with the Minnesota Mile. Let's talk about the points. It's all the line for Briar Bauman. That magic number for Briar Bauman is 25. Anything more than 25 points after this event, he will clinch his first championship, but we know Jared Meese is so strong on these mile racetracks. And that's not the only championship that's tight. For more, let's send it to Kristen. Thanks, guys. We are back to racing on a mile, and so many big storylines for us to follow. Now, Jared Meese in the Twins class is still in contention to defend his championship, and he's currently undefeated on the miles in 2019. But for anyone to visit Victory Lane, Jared Meese or Briar Bauman, they're going to have to preserve their vision and manage tear-offs. This is a mid-pack tear-off. Just to give you a little bit of perspective, welcome to Minnesota, guys. A little bit of roost, eh? So just another thing the riders will have to deal with on this track. It's a horse racing facility, and there you see some of that roost flying. The bigger deal with this racetrack is how wide it is. We'll see bikes running the bottom, middle, top, so multiple lanes to choose from, which makes for great action. And maybe a chance to avoid some of that roost. Brian Smith, always good in the miles, won this race last year. We're waiting for a big race from him. It has been a bit of a struggle for our 2016 series champion. So let's get into our last race. The rookie, Brandon Price, almost ran down your leader, Briar Bauman. First, he gets around the defending champ, Jared Meese, and makes a run of the 14, ends up a close second. Brandon Price, a big rising star in this series. Brandon Price, the leader in the Rookie of the Year points battle in the AFT Twins. Being Rookie of the Year, it means a lot, you know, just to come in and just compete right from the beginning. It's a big deal. Price charging hard. The most challenging aspect of the season would have to be just moving up. The level of talent with these riders, it's completely different than the singles class. Everybody's fast. The intensity, everything about this class is way different than anything else I've experienced. Jerry Stinchfield and the Roosters of this team, you know, he gave me the tools I need to go out there and challenge for wins. And then just going out and trusting my body that I can push to the limit and uh, compete. Brandon Price, a career night, a podium finish. That's a lot of confidence for that young man. You know, I think I'll remember this one for the rest of my life. First podium, it was great, but I wasn't satisfied at all. I come here to win, and uh, every time I step on the bike, you know, I want to come out and do what I can to be up front and try to win a race. How about the rookie? What an improvement for the 192 of Brandon Price. The 2020 season, I'll be racing in the Super Twins class. You know, I'm uh, really excited. I've had so much fun racing in this class. I feel more comfortable, more at home on these bikes than I did on the 450s. I'm just uh, ready to get this next year rolling. The momentum I have right now rolling into 2020, it's, it's gonna be great. To be up front competing with the guys 
challenging for podiums, challenging for wins. It's, uh, it's everything rolling into the next season. Can, you know, I'm going to try and do the same thing right off the bat next season, try and uh, make a run at that championship. Let's show you some qualifying action with our AFT twin storylines. The old rivals, Jared Meese and Brian Smith battling in semi one. Jeffrey Carver there as well. Showing how multiple line this racetrack is. Jared Meese running the top. Big run off turn four here on the first lap. He would get away from Brian Smith and go on to win semi number one. And again, he's won every main event mile so far this year. He needs to get this one in the main to stave off championship elimination. Bronson Bauman, a good run, gets around Smith for a third. Here's a battle in semi two. Briar Bauman there. There is that rookie, Brandon Price. And how about now back on a Harley Davidson? Brandon Robinson switching late in the season. His team has disbanded. Harley gave him a bike, and he's running good in the 44. Great run by Brandon Price here, P2. But Briar Bauman would go on to win semi number two, set up the Jared Meese Briar Bauman battle for the championship. Kind of multiple goals for Bauman, who's still never won a mile. He would love that to complete that career grand slam and win on every type of track, but it's not going to be easy with. Robinson Price and so many other guys going fast in our singles division. Dalton Gauthier really wants to win this one and stretch that points lead. But in the singles division, there are always a lot of contenders. Stay with us. American Flat Track on NBCSN is brought to you by Russ Brown Motorcycle Attorneys. If you go down, call Russ Brown. By Roof Systems of Dallas, Texas, the entitlement sponsor of AFT Singles. And by Cat Rental Store, the official heavy equipment supplier of American Flat Track. All season long, Roo Systems AFT singles class points have been tight, but Gautier on the move now. Dan Bromley, we've talked about it all year. He has to go out there and win this race. Mikey Rush, 36 back, probably going to take a miracle for him to win this championship. Bromley has not gotten a win yet this year, and the last two races, Gautier has stretched it back out. So let's see what's in store. We'll start with our AFT singles storylines and qualifying. Young Dallas Daniels, the rookie, already won a TT. Podium on a short track, and he's on that 163 showing he can go fast at a mile. Look at that. Bromley gets run wide by Ryan Wells on the exit to turn two, but it was a great five-rider battle for the win of semi number one. Morgan Mischler in the hunt, Ryan Wells and Gauthier up front. But that kid, Dallas Daniels, rookie, turn pro halfway to the year, will not let him go. And that sets us up for the draft to the finish. Right here, little elbow touch to the line. Ryan Wells, big draft at the line, but Dallas Daniels holds on to win semi number one. So the Estens and Yamaha boys, one, two, and Daniels proves he's just as fast on a big track as he is on a TT or a short track. Great battle here. Chad Coast from the Suzuki, number 49. And Mikey Rush trying to keep his championship dreams alive. Off turn four, we see the horsepower of that Honda down the front straightaway. Coast could not draft back to beat Mikey Rush to win semi number two. So the RMR Honda rider takes to win. Shayna Texter, normally the miles of strength for her, says not necessarily quite as much here in Minnesota. She ends up fourth in her qualifying race. So we are ready for our main event, Bromley. Not quite a must-win situation, but pretty darn close. Shayna Texter, as we said, always fast on the miles. We'll see if she can bounce back from some uh, rough runs in qualifying. And there is Mikey Rush trying to get a feel for this racetrack as they line up that RMR Honda. Here's the Russ Brown motorcycle attorney starting lineup. Rush and Daniels get the good picks. Gautier, let's see what he can do with the championship pressure on. If he stretches it over Bromley, this could be over. One more time, let's send it to Krista B. Dalton Gautier said that after his series suspension, he wasn't sure if he'd ever race again, but guys, tonight he is contending for a championship in the AFT singles class. Earlier in the day, I asked him, what gives you this edge? What gives you the edge in this series? He told me, I feel at home when I'm on the bike. I feel at home when I'm racing. And guys, it is undeniable. Dalton Gautier has innate talent. He has more drive off the corner than any other rider in this series. He's running two classes with a championship on the line, and he said, I'm feeling good. I actually think I'm in Dan's head a little bit, and that helps my confidence here. Guys, he is racing with that fire and the pressure of his first championship not affecting the comeback kid whatsoever. No, the way he's ridden the last couple, you would think he's been through this before. He's ridden well. He has, and Gautier's been consistent with these last couple of races. He's been aggressive. It's going to be fun to see. Does he play conservative or he, does he go for the win? So here it is. We're going to go on the big mile track for the singles. The qualifying action was great. We expect the main to be even better. And a jump on the line. 
And that was Gautier, and he's had problems with jumping the start in earlier races this season, and he's sent to the back row. So championship drama before we even go racing. Just shows the pressure. He knows he wants to be up front, get out of all that roost, and just a small mistake jumps the start. Going to make his job a lot harder to try to go to the front. He got to make sure he doesn't jump again, or he could be DQ'd, and that would ruin the championship for him. So Bromley on the inside road two. Can he take advantage? Here we go from Minnesota. Great jump for Wells in the 94. Going to lead them in. But multiple grooves, as you've been talking about, AJ, and I don't know if he's in the premier line. Chad Coase trying to work the middle, the high line. That is Rush around the outside. Mikey Rush going to carry all that momentum off turn two. Down the back straightaway. Going to lead into turn three, but we know what mile racing is all about, the big draft. And big Dan Bromley, six foot three, trying to cut a hole through that air, and he's doing it down on the inside right now. Let's see how well he performs in that fourth place spot. In fact, he's trying to take two spots at once away from Coast and Wells. Three wide off turn four for second place, but Mikey Rush, he's been shot out of a cannon after the first lap. You do not normally see leads that big on a mile track. And to give you an idea, look how close everyone else is besides Rush. Coase is in there. Can't quite make it happen. In fact, it's the Yamaha duo of Daniels on the 163 and Wells on the 94. Trying to hang in there against Coase and Bromley. You can see down the back straightaway here, Rush, clean vision. Dallas Daniels already having to pull tear offs into turn three. His teammate, Ryan Wells, trying to find a way by, but look at Mikey Rush. He is gone. Can he run away and hide with this main event? Also, we see Green Kawasaki. That is Maxwell, the Australian. He's in the fight as well. Dallas Daniels doesn't have his riding coach, Johnny Lewis, on hand. Johnny's actually at a uh, riding school uh, for some uh, women racers this weekend, but Daniels obviously has learned a lot, and he's still using those lessons. Wells gets by him. Daniels goes back after him. Here is Coase around the outside. Great racing as usual, but unusual. That's only for second because Mikey Rush has checked out. Let's check in with Gautier. Forget that sixth place started on that Husqvarna onboard, the graphic there. He actually started last in this one because he jumped the start. He is up to eighth, though. Look at the lens. It shows how strong the roost is. The lens is already cracked on the onboard there, but Gautier making his way through the field here. Ryan Wells trying to get away now from his teammate Dallas Daniels and track down Mikey Rush. Well, that helmet cam brings up a great point that Kristen had mentioned at the top of the show. Roost here, a serious situation. And Gautier might have the speed to come to the back, but does he have enough tear-offs as this battle continues to rage with Coase and Dallas Daniels? Gautier in the 122 trying to get up in the middle of it. Look right at, in the middle. Look at Mishler around the outside there. Morgan Mishler. He's up to four, trying to make a move on Dallas Daniels for third. And he does it. So nicely done for the 69. So Coast and Daniels keep battling. Mishler goes around them. Is Ryan Wells maybe feeling some pressure that his rookie teammate of the Estes in Yamaha has been so strong ever since turning pro? Wells expected to be a title contender this year after winning this championship a few years ago. Not the best season for him. He's got an outside shot to maybe run the leader down and go for the win. Meanwhile, Coase and Daniels are back. Let's send it to Kristen with an update. Dallas Daniels won his semi. He said once he got over the mental hurdle of the pro pass, it's smooth sailing. His rider coach, Johnny Lewis, not here this weekend, but definitely making him proud from afar. Yeah, no doubt about it. He has fought back, but then Mishler returns fire and takes the number three position back away from Daniels and Coase. All this battling, Dan Bromley getting shuffled back bit by bit on the number one. Right there, you can see in the background, the two championship contenders. Gautier has just got around Bromley. That'll make him feel a little bit more comfortable, at ease, not having to push so hard, knowing his main rival is now behind him. Wow, and you know that Bromley knows that Gautier started in the back row. So that is a confidence shift right there. And another shift is the fact that Wells is now practically to the rear wheel of your leader, Mikey Rush. He might just be within drafting distance of the lead. So the New Yorker going after the Californian up front. Battle continues to rage for third. But the fight for the win is on for the first time here in the singles class of the Minnesota Mile.
continues to rage. 15 of Mikey Rush and the RMR Honda, the Estens and Yamaha 94. Ryan Wells, they have swapped it several times already. Wells made up a lot of distance to get to Rush. Rush doing a great job fending him off. Now the chess match begins. Where is Ryan Wells stronger than Mikey Rush? Does Mikey Rush, does Ryan Wells, do they want to lead off of turn four? It's a game right now. We're on board. The Honda on board with Mikey Rush off turn four. Ryan Wells gets a good drive. Can he draft down the front straightaway? Yeah, we haven't seen a ton of draft passes in this race because Rush had a big enough lead early where no one could get to him. Wells has done the hard work. He's gotten there, and now we see the draft. Into turn one, Ryan Wells gets him. And what's unique about this Minnesota mile, that start-finish line is three-quarters of the way down the front straightaway, so you got plenty of time to set up your pass off turn four. All right, so... Is Rush actually happy to be back in the number two position? Obviously, in racing, that's a strange position to be. But on the miles in American flat track, it's often the best position. He's going to work on Wells now to try to get the lead back. And wow, how rough is this track in the entrance to that corner? And they're still going for it. It might be rough, but they are full throttle off a of turn four. They're not lifting. We are coming to the line. Two to go. Mikey Rush, wow, he clears Ryan Wells quite easy. Yes, that, he made short work of him. That might be everything. So Wells has got to put that in the notebook, go back to work. Dallas Daniels is locked down third, but they have distanced themselves from him. It is a one-on-one -on -one duel with a lap and a half to go. Wells almost had the move again. You can see Ryan Wells tried to pick up the throttle a little early there. Rear of the bike stepped out. He lost some time having to make it up down the back straightaway here into turn three. I really, I really like how Rush is getting off turn four. That's going to be the key to this victory. Does he want a lead coming off a of four with a white flag out? Would he rather not? Let's find out. Ryan Wells on the 94 is right there. White flag now inside as they head down the front stretch for the next to last time. Gautier has moved into a podium spot despite starting in last. So that is going to be huge for the championship if he can hold that spot. But let's keep the focus on the battle for the win. Rush, Wells, no, Dallas Daniels now trying to get back to third with Gautier. Down the back straightaway here, Ryan Wells. He's tucked in the draft. Can he make the move into three? Does he want to make the move into turn three? Well, he doesn't make it. Whether he wanted to or not, I'm not sure. He's edging to the inside, looking for a different line. Mikey Rush is going to run the outside. Get that huge drive off the corner. Is it going to be enough? Here it is, shootout here at the Minnesota Mile. Mikey Rush aiming for the win. Here comes the draft. Here's the move for Wells, right down to the line. Woo! Oh, who got it at the line? That I was can't tell. a dead heat. And they're giving it to Rush, and I think Wells knows it. It was a good race either way. They congratulate each other on it. 0 .004 seconds, the final margin. Oh, what a race. That's what mile racing is all about in American flat track. Let's watch it again here. Off turn four, Jason, I thought Ryan Wells got such a great drive. He was tucked there. I thought for sure he'd get by Mikey Rush with no problem at the line. Yeah, he just got there, but then the drive stalls, and now we're going to see it. Yes, it was the red fender. What are we going to say, three inches or so? On board with Rush. Wow, on board right here. Ryan Wells, great drive. You think it's game over, and it just stalls out right there, and wow, that is so tight. Man, mile racing never lets you down at American Flat Track. Daniels fights his way past Gote to take the podium so the kid can get it done, even on the big tracks. Gote won't clinch a championship, but Bromley struggling to 10 tonight. That is big for Gote's hopes. Let's send it down to the podium with Chris Kabit. Mikey, you were in a race of your own throughout that race ryan wells started to gain on you he started to reel you in how challenging was it to gauge your pacing in that race and what went into your line selection coming out of turn four on that final lap uh, it's it's really hard to lead a race for that long especially when we're on a mile and there's a lot of drafting going on so i just i was trying to break the draft early i don't know if i did or not but uh the boys did a great job my engine ran awesome thank big thanks to american honda just they build me a great runner week in and week out. My wife at home, I know that was nerve wracking for her, so we did it, baby. And uh, just like I said, I got so many good people behind me. It's awesome. I'm, I'm glad to get another win on the series. So there'll be three for this series, and I, I'm not done yet. 
points updated. Gote 21 over Bromley. So Gote's basically just got to finish that last one. Yeah, gives him a little bit able to be easy, not make any mistakes. Mikey Rush winning that race, unfortunately, is now eliminated from the championship. Let's check back in on the podium. Ryan, a close second place finish out there. But when you got off the bike, you were all smiles. You would have thought that you won the race. How good did it feel to be out there and be racing in contention? Man, super awesome, super fun race. Man, I had to run Mikey down a good, uh, good amount. So to, to be able to do that and then make a bid for the, for the lead, man, I really did think I had the win and uh, just came up a little bit short. But my whole Essendon Racing Monster Energy Yamaha Yama Lube team has really just been busting their butts. And I think it, it really showed today with me and Dallas both on the box. So huge thanks to those guys and, and just, yeah, awesome race. Hopefully get back up here the last race of the season. And to be joined by his teammate, this is Dallas Daniels getting back around your points leader, Dalton Gauthier, on the last lap to grab third. This kid has definitely lived up to the hype since turning pro. Dallas Daniels with three podiums in four starts. Take me through that forward progression because that was a race that you had to fight for podium position. Yeah, all day I was getting terrible starts, so that didn't really help me at all. I, I had good speed and I think I had the pace to run up front but I just couldn't get off the line, not sure what the deal was. But So I got off about six, but in turn one, I was able to pass about everybody up to Mike and get up to second, run second. But I knew if um, we had these great Yamahas built by by Mike Stauffer that if I sat back a little bit, I could draft Dalton by the line, which we did. And RS and some Monster Energy Yamahas were running great. Tim gave me this offer that I can come do what I love and you know not really have to worry about anything except riding the thing. So big thanks to him, Tommy Hayden, my dad, everybody it was good. Yes, it definitely was good. Every position hotly contested out there and a finish as close as you could possibly ask for. Mikey Rush taking his third victory this season. Production Twins points are closing in. We'll have that coverage next. American Flat Track on NBCSN is brought to you by Indian Motorcycle. Be legendary. By Vance and Hines, the presenting sponsor of AFT Twins. By American Flat Tracker Clothing Company. Find your groove at AmericanFlatTracker.com. Production Twins class, a new championship this year. Corey Texter started on fire winning the first three, but they are closing in. Holding on to that points lead, but it's shrinking. Ryan Barnes, Colby Carlisle, they both have a shot at winning this championship. And they've been very quick as of late. So how is Texter dealing with the pressure? Let's send it to Kristen. He has three wins and a 16-point lead in the production Twins class. Corey Texter, how do you plan on closing out 2019? Just have fun. Uh, go out, trust my instincts, have fun, and ride the motorcycle. Um, try not to stress too much about it. Just another race that I want to go out there and try and win and just finish the season uh, with a smile on my face. You could very well clinch the championship tonight. I know you don't want to talk about that too much. Don't put that juju out there. But for you, what would it mean to, to clinch the championship here? I mean, I've been coming to these pro races since, since I was two weeks old. So for me to be able to possibly clinch this, uh, it's been a lifelong dream for me. But, uh, yeah, I'm just going to take it uh, one, one session at a time, go out, have fun riding the bike. Um, the bikes, the G&G &G Yamahas, are, are so fast, and I'm thankful we're on uh, two miles to finish off the year. But we're gaining momentum, and I feel great. So go out there, have fun, and just do what I can do. Let's show you the highlights of the production twins made. Ryan Barnes has pulled some wheelies this year, but that one was too much. And he's gonna go all the way to the back of the start. So tough break for the man second in points. Chad Coast takes the lead. Texter there in second. Great for TV, not great for whole shots. No. Barnes would have a lot of work to do throughout the course of this main to try to get back up front. But here we see Carlisle, Coast battling for the lead. This would go on the whole main event. This is a former singles class champ, the Flying Tomato, Carlisle. He has figured this production twins machine out. 1-4 and looking for another win in the last three races. Barnes comes all the way back to pass Texter, but look at Texter on the 65 trying to get him back. Barnes, one small mistake here, gets into turn three way too deep, has to gather the bike up. Because of that, he would get past and ultimately finish sixth. And that is big for Texter to score more points than Barnes, but no one scores more points than Carlisle, whose late season surge continues. Coase and Cody John Cox round out the podium. Texter clinging to fourth. Gote was in this one. He finished fifth. So that'll change points a little bit. Carlisle is now second, but the gap remains 15. Carlisle needs to go out and win that finale and see what happens. Corey Texter just needs to be consistent at the final event and he will have his first championship in American Flat Track.
But Carlisle is going to keep fighting him for it. Here he is. Chad got a great jump on me, and uh, I was a little worried, but then I figured it out. You know, I started running it in hard, and uh, it was a very physical track today. So, you know, I can't thank, you know, my trainers, and luckily I've got a good work ethic to put in the work all week. I would not have been able to win that if I wasn't as fit as I am. So uh, it's just, you know, my team's amazing. They gave me a great motorcycle today, obviously the best one on the track, and I uh, can't commend them enough, you know, other than a win. It's thanks to Essence and Racing Monster Energy, Yamalube, Yamaha, all my other great sponsors. Uh, let's do it again next week and keeping this title hunt. That'll be a good one in New Jersey. It has been a good one nearly every week in the Twins class ever since the Indian Wrecking Crew returned to racing in 2017. Their squad is 1-2-3 in points this year, and it's a home race for them in Minnesota. Here's Gary Gray. From our very foundation, we are a racing company. Indian Motorcycle was actually founded by two men who met at a racetrack. George Hendy and Oscar Hedstrom. One was a great bicycle racer, the other made great engines. They put the two together and founded Indian Motorcycle in 1901. We're in the process of getting back up, rebuilding the company, rebuilding the brand, and that's why the FTR is so important to us. It signaled our return to racing after a large absence. We had to do it right. We built the FTR 750 specifically to compete in American flat track. We looked at what we had to do to win races, and that's what we put into the bike. We worked feverishly to make a very small, compact, high-performance engine, and then worked with Jared Meese uh, to develop the chassis. The whole program was done in less than a year. The highlight of the 2019 season is the fact that almost everything changed except for our performance on the track. We have a pretty new team, uh, new facility that we're working out of, partnering with SNS, yet we've still been very successful, and it's, I'd say first and foremost, it's the people. He's got it! First ever win in American Flat Track! It's really important for Indian Motorcycle to be involved in our home race. All cards on the table this weekend and go for the win. Well, the motorcycle helps, but you gotta have the right tires as well. Fans coming in here in droves to this hotly contested Minnesota mile. Let's get a little update on the rubber via Dunlop Tire Talk. Kristen has the Indian Wrecking Crew man, Bronson Bauman. Yeah, thanks, Jason. Today, the entire paddock going with the Dunlop R8. Bronson, why is that and why do you like that compound? The R8's a little bit softer. Like, uh, we typically like the softer compound, more traction, more drive off the corner. Track's really hard today, so not too worried about tire wear, so it's really optimal to run the softer compound where we can get the drive and not worry about the tire going away late in the race. So the tires are going away, and neither is this man, Jared Meese. He's got to win this one and hope for some bad luck for Briar Bauman to keep his championship hopes alive. Stay with us. for the main event next to last round of the American Flat Track Championship, the Indian Motorcycle Minnesota Mile, presented by Law Tigers. Let's get one more update from Kristen. In 2018, Briar Bauman ran out of fuel here on the Minnesota Mile. When I spoke with him, he told me that he is still bitter about that loss, but this year they are not going to make the same mistake again, and that is because SNS fabricated a fuel cell spacer just to give them a pinch more. When I spoke with him earlier in the day, he said we were checking all of those boxes because, yes, he said he's motivated by a championship, but to win a career grand slam would mean the world to Briar Bauman. They are checking all the boxes, dotting all the I's, crossing all the T's tonight, guys. Must finish on the podium tonight if Jared Meese wins. Nothing's guaranteed in racing, but Meese has won all the miles this year. Here's the starting grid. Everything's on the line tonight. It's all about Jared Meese. He knows he has to do one thing, go win the race. That's all he cares about. And then hope that Bauman doesn't finish on the podium, which has only happened two times so far this year. But mile racing is different. It's going to be 15 laps of furious racing here from Minnesota. Carver around the outside, gonna lead them into and now out of turn two. Down to the inside, look at that, the 44, Robinson jumping back on that Harley Davidson and looking good in second. Well, Robinson hits a huge run off of turn two, has to save it, but Jeffrey Carver down the back straightaway, leading into turn three. And Bronson Bauman on the 37 is third and running the high line to try to get around Robinson. Not much room left, then a mistake by Carver. 
Bronson might go all the way to the lead here. Carver down the front straightaway. Jared Mees is where he doesn't want to be. Mid-pack, using a lot of tear-offs. Right now, he has to get to the lead. Yeah, the riders saying they're just doing the math. You can't, whoa, whoa, whoa. We got a crash here way up on the outside. Brian Smith with the number four sliding into second. But I got a feeling that the Whelan caution lights are going to come out. There it is, the red light. So we are looking at a restart. Whoa, and a lot, I mean a lot of riders down. Briar Bauman is in this wreck. Whoa. This is a huge for the championship right now. Well, certainly first, we hope everybody's okay. And then even if they are, are they all going to be able to restart? Let's try to see this again. See, two separate wrecks really kind of happening. Breyer and Bronson crash into each oh, other. Look Brandon, at the motorcycle. Brandon Price on the outside there gets into the barriers by himself, and then all kinds of bikes compiling in. Vanderker as well. And with those bikes tumbling, this is Breyer Bauman. So we're going to get a look at kind of the impact he took. Oh! Wow, Breyer got in so deep into the corner. Well, they're working, wreck. On the, oh, they're working on the motorcycle. Look, he's only got a certain amount of time to get back to the line. If they can't get it fixed, they're working on Halberts, Harley Davidson. If Bauman can't get to the line, his entire points lead could be up in smoke. He's actually doing his own work here to try to help his crew. See right there, Bronson is on top. He goes down. Breyer, unfortunately, nowhere to go, gets into him. Hits the barriers a ton, and then after that, we see Vanderker, other riders compiling in. Halbert, Brandon Price had his own wreck on the, yeah, on the outside of turn one there, so hopefully, and hopefully all the riders are okay. And look at this. They're back on the grid. Uh, well, this is everything. They might have saved the season by getting that number 14 fixed. That bike went flying. Same thing for Bronson. Same thing for Halbert. I can't believe they're back on the grid. Jared Mees has the break he was looking for. Complete restart. Here we go. A good jump of the 44 Robinson. Carver, though, is going to get it again. This time running the low line, and he's going to lead them out. But Jared Mee's in position as well. Here comes Brian Smith on the number four. Down the back straightaway, Jeffrey Carver leads this race again. Jared Mee's running second. The question is, is how damaged is Briar Bauman's bike? Can he get up front, get into the top three, and clinch this championship? That's going to be a tall order, bent up motorcycle coming from the back. And if he doesn't make the podium and Mies wins, Mies stays off championship elimination. And Mies has got these guys right where he wants them. He's in the fight, dueling with Carver. And it's good to see Brian Smith back in the mix. Been a tough season for the 2016 series champ. Got off of the factory and then went back to the Howerton Crosley folks in that Kawasaki bike. They've got it hooked up tonight, and he's battling Mies for second. Jeffrey Carver doesn't care about any championship clinch scenarios. He's out there to win a race, win his first race of the season, leads into turn three over Jared Mees. Mees just hanging back there. Same thing with Smith. It's a 15-lap main event, a little shorter than usual on the miles, so they won't be able to play as much of the cat and mouse, and Mees trying to put the push on Love the different lines out here on this track, too. See Jared Mees making a run on Carver into turn one on the SNS onboard. Gets that pass done with ease. Can he run away and hide from this field? Looks like Carver is going to try to get him right back. No, can't make it happen. This is a dangerous situation. Whoa, Mees getting all sorts of sideways. I was going to say it's dangerous if Mees has the pace to just pull away from these riders and break that draft. We're going to find out in a hurry. Jeffrey Carver, Brian Smith, these two riders are going to have to do whatever they can to hold on because Jared Mees looked like he has pulled the pin on the grenade and he is gone. We hear now that Briar Bauman is up to six as you see the four of Smith completely sideways coming out of that corner. So a good comeback so far for your series leader who has to finish this race in third if Mees wins. Smith going for the second place spot. And here's what it comes down to. Yes, Breyer wants to clinch his championship tonight, but he just had a huge wreck. They had to fix his bike. He wants to do everything he can to salvage as many points as possible. So if he doesn't clinch the championship tonight, he can just smoothly go to the last round of the season and have a solid run. But 
What does Breyer do on a bent up motorcycle? He's going for fourth place off of turn four. We're on board with him right now. The Indian motorcycle on board and he has made the pass on Robinson. Unbelievable from the back from a huge crash. Robinson though using that draft to get back by him. Into turn one. We know Breyer loves to send it, run that high line. He's running the top up there. That's a great battle, but here for second, Carver, Brian Smith battling out for the podium spot. Jared Mees running away. That's what they were afraid of. Mees finally got that number one spot. He's putting distance on these two quickly. It is a great battle though between Carver, who's become one of the best mile racers, and Smith, who's really one of the best all time on the miles. They have been wheel to wheel for the majority of this main event, and it's still not over. At this point, it's almost like they don't care. Jared Meese is gone. They're not gonna catch him. They're battling for second, but just in the background there, we can see Breyer, he is coming. If they make a mistake and he can get to the podium, the championship is his. And with the way these two are duking it out, anything is possible. Jared Meese, meanwhile, running a spectacular race. That's all they can do is try to win it. The battle for second continues here, but now it's a three-rider duel. It's been Carver and Smith, but here comes Briar Bauman. Surprise, Briar Bauman, he is up to second. This guy fights, he battles, he doesn't care. If something happens, he gets back up on that bike and he gets after it, battling for second, trying to clinch this championship. I, I am speechless. The bike end over end three or four times in that wreck. We are wondering if he could even get back into the race, score any points at all to run down Smith and Carver and pass them. That is incredible, and it would be more than enough to deliver the title. But now that he's gotten them, these two are smart. They know exactly how to use the draft to stay with them, and there goes Smith right back by. Give so much credit to Breyer for getting on that motorcycle and getting after it but you just give as much credit to his race team. They had to fix that bike. It was bent. They did everything they could in a short amount of time to get him back on the race track. We see here, gets around Brian Smith. He's pulled three bike lengths for second. He's so close to clinching this championship. Yep, it's Dave Zanotti and Michelle DeSalvo. They were working with Breyer even before he was on the factory Indian team. They linked up with Indian. They've gone to another level. Will it be enough to be crown champion here? Smith, Carver, still close enough to make him sweat for it down the stretch. And look at Smith, right back past him. You could hear Breyer got a little wide off turn two, had to get out of the throttle just for a second. When he did, Brian Smith was able to get around him. But more importantly, that let Jeffrey Carver hang on the tail end of both these. We know Breyer, he has to finish third to make sure that this championship is done. And third is going to be tough because Smith is locked down second. Carver is so close from fourth. And you know the draft at a mile. This could literally be a photo finish even for third, which could prevent the championship from being sewn up. So much is going to happen here in the late stages of this Minnesota mile. Three wide out of this corner. This is what I love about Breyer's courage. He wrecked into the barriers running the high side. So what's he do? I don't care. I'm going back to the high side, holding the throttle down and not lifting. This is what he's so good at, running the high line around these mile racetracks. He had this race practically won last year when he ran out of gas because he said, I was wide open around the outside the whole time and we used more fuel than I expected. Shorter race tonight, that's not gonna be a problem. In fact, it's so short it's nearly over. White flag is out. Mies has got the win locked up. Ken Bauman, hold on, he's in third right now. If he loses one more spot, it's gonna go down to the finale. He just took a look over his left shoulder. Yeah, he wants to finish second, but second or third, he doesn't care which one. He doesn't want to be fourth. Jeffrey Carver's got to make a run down the back straightaway to have a chance to make this championship go to the final round. What can you say about Jared Meese? A phenomenal race. Very rarely do you see someone pull away to this degree in a mile. He's done it. Meese is going to win it, but Bauman, trying to clear Smith off of turn four again to lock down the title. Here it is, winning every mile so far in 2019. Jared Meese wins in Minnesota. There's the championship, Smith second. Bellman from down in the dirt and back on the grid, takes third. And does that not sum up his season? He's gone through the ups and downs. He's salvaged it every time. And for the first time, he is a champion in American flat track. And he knows it. He knew where he had to finish. The emotion is pouring out. 
I can't imagine having to go win a championship and being down in the first lap like he was, not knowing if his bike was even going to get back into this race, get back on that bike, not knowing how bent it is now, yeah. and going out there and attacking. He can barely even ride that thing now. He is just overcome with emotion. I talked to Breyer before this race. He said, I have no idea how I'm going to play into the finale. I've never been in this situation before. I don't know what to do. He did it. He finished his third, and that eliminates Jared Meese from a third straight championship. There are your results from the rest of this Minnesota mile. Again, great job by Meese to take the victory. He's been so strong. But he does have to hand over that number one plate to a rider he helped train and mentor the last couple of years. They keep it in the Indian motorcycle family. And look at this. Mies is going to do his victory lap with Bauman on the back of the motorcycle. Passing of the crown. That is, that's just awesome to see. You can't, yeah. you can't even put it into words. But we see here, confirmation, 27 points. Briar Bauman can go to the final race of the season and just relax. <laughs> what a feeling that's got to be. Let's send it to Kristen. Briar Bauman, you can now say that you are an American flat track premier class champion. You and this team battled through so much adversity, especially tonight. How will this title resonate with you? I think that's just it. We just didn't quit. I, I mean, Indian motorcycle powered by progressive. We just had this mentality that we weren't going to be denied. You know what I mean? Um, all year there's been issues that go unseen but they just ch keep chipping away they have my back and uh that was it tonight i was stressing so bad bronson and i both crashed my first concern was everyone's safe second was am i gonna get to race so to finish it off like that like it just is like it's an exclamation point on my my whole season you know there's been like i said there's been issues that no one really knows about and for us to make it through tonight i just can't even can't even describe it the resiliency that this team has exhibited throughout this season. When you guys have been out of the hunt, you've put yourself back in contention. You've rebounded when you needed to rebound. And this was just another example of that tonight. What can you say about your team? I, I can't even explain my team. I mean, my, my mechanic, Dave and Michelle, they, they moved from California to Wisconsin to work at s, &S for me. Like, I have the greatest support group I've ever asked for. Shayna, my family, her family, all of our friends. I love this. I love the sport. I love being here every weekend, and and that's what fires me up. I want I want to put on a show for my friends and be able to talk about it with them afterwards, you know, and and have them come to my house and us be, you know, be able to feel this every single day. So I just can't say enough about any motorcycle powered by Progressive. It's this is a dream come true, and I can't thank them for it. There is Shane Texter, singles class championship contender and longtime girlfriend of Briar Bauman. They have done it. He is a champion in the twins class. American Flat Track on NBCSN is brought to you by Vance and Hines, the presenting sponsor of AFT Twins by Roof Systems of Dallas, Texas, the entitlement sponsor of AFT Singles, and by American Flat Tracker Clothing Company. Find your groove at AmericanFlatTracker.com. Sunoco Go the Distance Award. Bronson Bauman has compiled the most laps in practice qualifying and racing this year. One race to go to hold on to that Sunoco Go the Distance Award. Briar Bauman, his brother, has won the title as far as the race win. The Motul move of the race tells this story. Jared Meese did what he had to do. Makes the pass on Jeffrey Carver there for the lead. Soon as he got the lead, ran away with it. Did everything that he had to do, but Briar was able to finish on the podium clinch the championship. So a two-season title streak for Mies is over, but he's definitely classy in defeat. Here's Kristen. Jared, seven wins this season. Considering the current points climate, what was going through your mind during that main event? Uh, I mean, it I was going to be hard for me these last two races to really win the championship, honestly. So just to go out there and win these last two and make a statement going into uh, next year and uh, work hard through the offseason and get that number one play back. Um, you know, incredible congratulations to uh, Breyer. He uh, he was just flat better than me all year this year, and um, he brought it week in and week out and showed uh, showed the true heart of a champion every race. So, um, you know, hats off to him and his team, and uh, congratulations to Indy Motorcycle. I uh, I can't say enough about the brand, the bike, the sponsors involved. It's uh, It's an amazing company, and I'm glad to be a big part of it. And you know he'll come back strong next year, and so will this guy. Great to see Brian Smith back up on the podium. Them guys made me earn it. The first 10 laps with Carver was intense. It was like the last lap every lap. 
Then here comes Briar, the champ now. He made me earn that uh, second place. That's probably the hardest second place I ever got. So uh, congrats to Briar, but uh, man, I wanna win that last race in New Jersey. And he won that race a year ago. It's the Meadowlands Mile. We'll have it for you here on NBCSN October 12th. Two titles still on the line, AJ. Singles on the production, Twins. Can we have the same action that we had tonight here for the Twins Championship? Hey, we always say anything can happen in racing for Bauman tonight. It pretty much all did happen in one night. Congrats to Mikey Rush. He's the Minnesota Viking of the singles class. Carlisle wins the production Twins. Mees the victory in the Twins division. But there's the emotion. Congrats to your new champion, Briar Bauman.